Okay, good morning. What are the object to solve this video lesson? That means after completion of this video lesson, you would be able to know the types of electrolytes. These are two types, strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes. Next, we discuss about Arrhenius theory of electrolytic dissociation. Next, we discuss about electrolysis. Next, examples of molten sodium chloride. Electrolysis of aqueous NaCl solution. Okay. Already, last in the last video lesson, we discussed some part of electrochemistry. What we discussed in the last video lesson, those are okay. Introduction of electrochemistry. Next, conductors and insulators. Next, types of conductors. Those are metallic or electronic conductors. Next, second one, electrolytic or ionic conductors. Next, we also discuss differences between metallic and electrolytic conductors. Okay, now we discuss types of electrolytes. Those are two types, strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes. Next, Arrhenius theory of electrolytic dissociation. Next, electrolysis. Next, and also we discuss examples of electrolysis. First one, electrolysis of molten or fused NaCl. Next one, electrolysis of aqueous NaCl solution. Okay, types of electrolytes based on the extent of ionization. That means how much amount of electrolyte will be dissociated. The electrolytes are divided into two types. One is strong electrolytes. Another one is weak electrolytes. Okay, listen. Based on the extent of ionization, that means how much amount of electrolyte will be decided, will be dissociated. The electrolytes are divided into two types. They are one strong electrolyte, two weak electrolyte. First, we discuss about strong electrolytes. What are the strong electrolytes definition? The electrolytes which ionize almost completely even at moderate concentration are called strong electrolytes. The conductivity of strong electrolyte is high due to containing of more ions. Collision. What is the strong electrolyte means? You take Example HCl. This is the example of strong electrolyte. It ionizes or dissociates into H plus Cl minus. Okay, listen. This is the strong electrolyte. It will be taken at moderate concentrations. How much amount of HCl we have taken? That much of HCl dissociate or ionize into H plus and Cl minus. That means if we take 100 molecules of HCl, 100 molecules dissociate into 100 H plus and Cl minus. That means the electrolytes which ionize almost completely even at moderate concentrations are called strong electrolytes okay at moderate concentration how much electrolyte we have taken that much of electrolyte will be dissociate or ionized into ions okay the electrolyte dissociate completely means that solution contain more ions so that strong electrolyte Conductivity is high. Okay. Examples strong acids like HCl, HNO3, H2SO4, etc. HCl dissociate into H plus, Cl minus, HNO3 dissociate into H plus, NO3 minus, H2SO4 dissociate into 2H plus, SO4 of minus 2. Next, strong bases also strong electrolyte like KOH. This is dissociated into K plus OH minus NaOH. 
it also dissociate into Na plus OH minus. It should be OH2. It also dissociate into Ba plus 2 to OH minus. Next salts like NaCl, KNO3, CuSO4, etc. NaCl completely dissociate into Na plus Cl minus. KNO3 dissociate into K plus NO3 minus. CuSO4 dissociate into Cu plus 2, SO4 of minus 2. Okay. This is about the strong electrolytes. Okay, the electrolytes which ionize or dissociate almost completely even at moderate concentrations are called strong electrolytes. The conductivity of strong electrolytes is high due to containing of more ions. Why? Because strong electrolyte dissociate completely means that contain more number of ions. That's why strong electrolytes conductivity is high. Next one, weak electrolytes. The electrolytes which ionize partially at moderate concentrations and having low conductivity are called weak electrolytes. Okay, listen, we take example of acetic acid, CH3COOH. This is the weak electrolyte example. CH3COH dissociate into CH3CO minus plus H plus. Okay. This is the weak electrolyte example. Okay, listen. If we take acetic acid at moderate concentration, acetic acid will be dissociate or ionized into CH3CO minus and H plus partially. That means if we take 100 molecules of acetic acid, only 10 molecules dissociate into CH3CO minus and H plus. So this weak electrolyte dissociate partially at moderate concentrations. Okay, this weak electrolyte does not ionize completely, only ionize partially. We take 100 molecules, only 10 molecules dissociate into state ion and H plus. That means this weak electrolyte contain less number of ions. That's why weak electrolytes conductivity is low. This is about the weak electrolytes. Okay, listen. The electrolytes which ionize or dissociate partially at moderate concentrations and having low conductivity due to less number of ions are called as weak electrolytes. Examples, weak acids like CH3COOH dissociate into CH3CO minus H plus. Next HCN, this is also weak electrolyte dissociate into H plus Cl minus. Next H2CO3, this is also weak electrolyte, dissociate into 2H plus CO3 of minus 2. Next, H3BO3, dissociate into H plus H2BO3 of minus. Next, weak bases also, all these are weak acids. Weak bases like NH4OH, this is important, dissociate into NH4 plus OH minus. MgOH2 dissociate into Mg plus 2, 2OH of minus. Next, LOH3 dissociate into L3 plus 3OH minus, etc. All these are weak bases. Next, salts like AgCl, BaSO4. AgCl dissociate into Ag plus Cl minus, BaSO4 dissociate into Ba plus 2, SO4 of minus 2. This is about the weak electrolytes. Okay, the electrolytes which ionize or dissociate partially at moderate concentrations and having low conductivity due to less number of ions are called as weak electrolytes. Examples, weak acids like acetic acid, HCN, H2CO3, H3BO3, etc. 
next weak bases like nh4oh mgoh2 loh3 etc next salts like agcl baso4 etc this is about the types of electrolytes we have discussed strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes okay, next we discuss about arrhenius theory of electrolytic dissociation okay this theory was proposed by arrhenius he was a sweden chemist in 1887 this theory was proposed to explain the behavior of electrolytes okay this theory was proposed by arrhenius a sweden chemist in 1887 to explain the behavior of electrolytes okay listen this is the electrolyte this electrolyte present in solution or in molten state suppose nacl is dissolved in water that is the nacl solution otherwise nacl is taken in a liquid state or fused state that is the molten state okay electrolytes in solution that means nacl dissolved in water or in molten state that means nacl is taken in a liquid state or fused state if we take nacl electrolyte this electrolyte dissociate into na plus and cl minus ions if we take any electrolyte that electrolyte dissociate into positive and negative ions okay electrolytes in solution or in molten state split into positive and negative ions the process of splitting of an electrolyte is called ionization or electrolytic dissociation the process of splitting of an electrolyte is called ionization or electrolytic dissociation okay generally the positive charged ions are called cations negative charged ions are called anions okay when electrolyte split into positive and negative ions positive ions are called cations negative ions are called anions okay after splitting how much positive charge is there cl minus charge is also equal to positive charge that means the total positive charge of cations is equal to total negative charge of anions so the electrolyte behaves as electrically neutral the electrolyte behaves as electrically neutral okay the properties of electrolytes in solution are the properties of ions produced okay electrolyte properties electrolyte iche 20 ions properties paina adhara padi untai Okay, the properties of electrolytes in solution or the properties of ions produced example we take cuso4 electrolyte that is taken in the aqueous solution that means cuso4 dis dissolve in water show the properties of cu plus 2 and so4 of minus 2 ions cuso4 in aqueous solution cuso4 no water lo iskunte CuSO4 yokka properties adhi release jeshe 20 Cu plus 2 and SO4 minus 2 ions pena depend hai inta okay, the properties of electrolytes in solution are the properties of ions produced so CuSO4 in aqueous solution shows the properties of Cu plus 2 and SO4 of minus 2 okay, next one the process of ionization is reversible the ions and undissociated molecules are in dynamic equilibrium okay listen if we take electrolyte generally weak electrolyte actually nacl is strong electrolyte if we take weak electrolyte weak electrolyte dissociate into same cations and anions that means nacl dissociate into na plus and cl minus if 
we take 100 molecules, if it is a weak electrolyte, only 10 molecules dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. After formation of 10 Na plus and 10 Cl minus, this Na plus and Cl minus combine together again NaCl, again form NaCl. Okay, first if we take NaCl of 100 molecules, only 10 molecules dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. After dissociation of 10 molecules, Na plus and Cl minus combine together again form NaCl. After some time, NaCl dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. Next, Na plus Cl minus combine together again form NaCl. After some time, how much NaCl dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus? That much of NaCl is formed by the Na plus and Cl minus. That means rate of forward reaction equals to rate of backward reaction. At that time, these electrolytes and ions concentration is not changed. That type, then equilibrium is formed between products and reactants, products and reactants. That equilibrium is called dynamic equilibrium. Okay, the process of ionization is reversible. That means NaCl dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. Na plus and Cl minus combine together again form NaCl. That is the reversible process. After some time, rate of forward reaction equals to rate of backward react reaction. Then equilibrium is formed between products and reactants. The type of equilibrium is called dynamic equilibrium. Okay. This is the, okay, next we discuss some more points of our Henius theory. Okay, listen, this is the operators, this is cell, okay, in this cell we take one beaker, in this beaker we take water and dissolve the NaCl in the water, then of course, NaCl solution is formed in this beaker. Next, put the two electrodes in the solution. One act as anode, another one act as cathode. Another one act as cathode. These two are connected with the battery through the wire. Anode charge is positive. Okay, listen. Anode charge is positive. Cathode charge is negative. Listen, this is the cell. In this cell, we take a beaker and pour the water and also dissolve the NaCl. Then NaCl aqua solution is formed. After that, put two electrodes. One act as anode, another one act as cathode. Anode is positive electrode, cathode is negative electrode. These two are connected with the battery. These two are connected with the battery through the wire. Okay, when electricity is passed, when electricity is passed by the battery through the solution, NaCl dissociate into positive and negative ions. Positive and negative ions. Na plus is the positive ion. This positive ion move towards the cathode side. Why? Because cathode has negative charge. Similarly, Cl minus ions move towards the anode side. Why? Because anode has positive charge. Okay. When electricity is passed by the battery through the solution, positive ions move towards the cathode, negative ions move towards the anode. After that, this Na plus ions, positive ions, gain electrons from cathode, Na plus ions, gain electrons from cathode and form Na. This Na is formed on the cathode. Similarly, Cl minus ions move towards the anode. This Cl minus ions lost their electrons and form Cl2. That means Cl minus ions give electrons to the anode and form Cl2. This Cl2 is liberated through the anode side. Okay. When electricity is passed, by the battery through the solution. Electrolyte dissociate into positive and negative ions. Positive ions move towards the cathode. 
negative ions move towards the anode plus 2 ions gain electrons from cathode and form NA this reaction is called reduction reaction why because at the cathode ions gain electrons gaining of electrons is called reduction so reduction takes place at the cathode similarly negative ions move towards the anode this negative ions give electrons to the anode and form Cl2 that means at the anode negative ions lost their electrons so oxidation takes place at anode loss of electrons is called oxidation so oxidation takes place at anode okay next the ratio between the number of molecules dissociated into ions to the total number of molecules taken initially is called degree of ionization or dissociation already i have explained if we take weak electrolyte in the weak electrolyte 100 molecules are there only 10 molecules dissociate into ions so what is the rate of ionization or rate of dissociation of this electrolyte means degree of ionization or rate of ionization that is indicated by alpha equals to number of molecules dissociated into ions here only 10 molecules dissociated so this is 10 next total number of molecules taken initially that is 100 so 10 by 100 that is 0 0.1 so degree of ionization is 0 0.1 so what is the degree of ionization the ratio between the number of molecules dissociated into ions to the total number of molecules taken initially is called degree of ionization or degree of dissociation okay the degree of ionization increases with dilution at infinite dilution it approaches unity dissociation is complete okay listen if we take weak electrolyte in the beaker first only 10 molecules dissociate into iron out of 100 molecules after add some more water that is dilution of solution some more ions dissociate another five molecules add water again and again finally at infinite dilution total molecules dissociate into ions so then dissociation is completed okay, the degree of ionization or dissociation increases with dilution at infinite dilution it approaches unity that means at infinite dilution the dissociate completely means how many molecules we have taken total molecules dissociate that means 100 initially taken 100 100 by 100 is 1 that is the unity next further the ionization of electrolytes depends on nature of solute nature of solvent and temperature okay, further the ionization of electrolyte depends on nature of solute nature of solvent and temperature okay, this is about the Arrhenius theory okay is that what is the Arrhenius theory okay, this, one. this theory was proposed by Arrhenius in 1887 to explain the behavior of electrolytes okay electrolytes in solution or in molten state dissociate into positive and negative ions the process of splitting of ionization the process of splitting of an electrolyte is called ionization or electrolytic dissociation okay, the positively charged are called cations negatively charged are called anions okay, the total positive charge of ion is equals to total negative charge of anion so electrolyte behaves as neutral electrolyte behaves as electrically neutral the properties of electrolyte are the properties of ions produced okay next the process of ionization is reversible the ions and undissociated molecules are in dynamic equilibrium 
okay, if we take 100 molecules, only 10 molecules dissociate into ions. After that, NaCl and Cl minus combine together again form NaCl. After some time, rate of forward reaction equals to rate of backward reaction. Then equilibrium is formed between products and reactants. After that, dynamic, dynamic equilibrium is formed between products and reactants. Okay, when electricity is passed by the battery through the solution, NaCl dissociate into positive and negative ions. Negative ions move towards the anode. Why? Because anode has positive charge. Next, similarly, positive ions move towards the cathode. Why? Because cathode has negative charge. Okay. After that, positive ions gain electrons and form Na at the cathode. So, gaining of electrons is called reduction. So, reduction takes place at the cathode. Similarly, Cl minus ions move towards the cathode. Those Cl minus ions lost their electrons and form Cl2. So, lossing of electrons is called oxidation. Oxidation takes place at the anode. So, next, the ratio between number of molecules dissociated into ions to the molecule to the total number of molecules taken initially is called degree of ionization or dissociation. Degree of ionization alpha equals to number of molecules dissociated into ions by total number of molecules taken initially. Okay, the degree of ionization increase with the dilution. At infinite dilution, it approaches unity. That means dissociation is complete. Further, the ionization of electrolyte depends on nature of solute, nature of solvent and temperature. Okay, next we discuss about electrolysis. Okay, electrolysis means electro EMF and lysis decomposition. The process of decomposition of an electrolyte by the passage of electricity is called electrolysis. If we take an ACL electrolyte, when electricity is passed through the electrolyte, that electrolyte dissociates into ions. This process is called electrolysis. Okay, the process of decomposition of an electrolyte by the passage of electricity is called electrolysis. In the electrolysis, electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. That means chemical reactions takes place due to the passage of electricity. Already I have explained when electricity is passed by the battery through the solution, the, when electrolyte dissociate into ions, this process is called electrolysis. In the electrolysis, these ions move towards the oppositely charged ions. After that, those ions gain or loss electrons and form neutral metals, neutral elements. So, reactions takes place at the anode and cathode. That means, electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. When electricity is passed through the solution, Chemical reactions takes place at the electrodes. So electrolysis is carried out in a vessel known as electrolytic cell. Okay? Electrolysis carried out in a vessel that is known as electrolytic cell. This is the electrolytic cell. The electrolyte is taken in the cell in the form of solution or in molten state. Okay, listen, electrolyte is taken in the vessel in the form of solution or molten state. That means if we take one beaker or vessel and pour the water and dissolve the NaCl, then NaCl solution is formed. After that, you put two platinum voids. Those act as electrodes. So one act as anode, another one act as cathode. Anode is indicated by positive charge. Cathode is indicated by negative charge. That means anode is positive electrode. Cathode is negative electrodes. The electrodes are connected with the help of copper wires to the two poles of terminals of a battery. Okay. The electrodes are connected with the help of copper wires to the two poles of terminals of battery that is positive and negative poles. When electricity is passed through the electrolytes, the ions move towards oppositely charged electrodes. Okay. When electricity is passed through the electrolytes, the ions move towards the oppositely charged electrodes. Chemical reactions occur at the electrodes with the formation of decomposition of products. 
and the current flows through the solution. Okay, listen. We take general electrolyte MA. So first, what is the electrolysis? The process of decomposition of electrolyte by passage of electricity is called electrolysis. In the electrolysis, electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. That means chemical reactions takes place due to the passage of electricity. Electrolysis is carried out in a vessel known as electrolytic cell. This is the electrolytic cell. Electrolyte is taken in a vessel in the form of solution or molten state. Okay, these next two platinum rods are put in the electrolyte solution. Those act as electrodes, one act as anode anode another one act as cathode anode is the positive electrode cathode is the negative electrode these two are connected with the copper wires to the terminals of battery that is positive and negative terminals when electricity is passed by the battery through the solution this electrolyte dissociate into positive and negative ions next positive ions move towards the oppositely charged cathode negative ions move towards the oppositely charged anode Next, at cathode, positive ions gain electrons and form M. Gaining of electron is called reduction. So, reduction takes place at the cathode. Similarly, negative ions move towards the anode. Negative ions lost their electrons and form A. The loss of electrons is called oxidation. So, oxidation takes place at the anode. Okay. Chemical reactions occur at the electrodes with the formation of decomposition of products and current flows through the solution. This is about the electrolysis. Okay. Next we discuss examples of electrolysis. First one, electrolysis of molten sodium chloride or fused sodium chloride. That means NaCl is taken in a liquid state. Listen, we take fused sodium chloride, that means liquid sodium chloride is taken in a electrolytic cell. This is the electrolytic cell. Fused NaCl is taken in a this cell or vessel. Next, two platinum rods are dipped in the fused NaCl's. One is connected positive terminal of the battery that act as anode and the rod is connected to the negative terminal of battery that act as cathode. Neg anode is positive electrode, cathode is negative electrode. Okay, next, sure. when electricity is passed by the battery through the solution, this NaCl dissociate into positive and negative ions, Na plus and Cl minus ions. This positive ions move towards the oppositely charged cathode that has negative charge. Okay. Next, this Na plus ions gain electrons from cathode and form Na. Gaining of electrons is called reduction. So, reduction takes place at the cathode. Similarly, Cl minus ions move towards the oppositely charged anode that has positive charge. At the anode, Cl minus ions lost its electrons and form Cl2 that is liberated from the anode side. Okay, so loss of electrons is called oxidation. So oxidation takes place at the anode. Oxidation takes place at the anode. Okay, this is about the electrolysis of molten or fused NaCl. Okay, listen, fused NaCl is taken in the vessel, that is the electrolyte. Okay, two platinum rods are dipped in the electrolyte. One rod is connected to the positive terminal of battery that act as anode. Anode has positive charge. Similarly, another rod is connected to the negative terminal of battery. So, that act as cathode, the charge is negative. Okay, next, when electricity is passed through the electrolyte, this electrolyte dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus ions. Positive ions move towards the cathode that has negative charge. At cathode, positive ion 
sodium plus gain electron from cathode and form NA. This NA is deposited on the cathode. So, gaining of electrons is called reduction. So, reduction takes place at the cathode. Similarly, Cl minus ions move towards the oppositely charged electrode that is anode. Anode has positive charge. At anode, Cl minus ions lose its electrons form Cl2. Loss of electrons is called oxidation. So, oxidation takes place at the anode. This is about the electrolysis of molten or fused NaCl. Next, we discuss about electrolysis of aqueous NaCl solution. Aqueous NaCl solution means NaCl is dissolved in water that is called aqueous NaCl solution. NaCl solution is electrolyzed by Nelson cell. Okay. In this electrolysis, we take Nelson cell. Okay. A perforated U shaped iron container is used as electrolytic cell. Okay. A perforated U shaped iron container is used as electrolytic cell. This is the Nelson cell. This U-shaped cell act as also cathode. That means cathode has negative charge. Next, one platinum rod or graphite rod is dipped in the solution that act as anode. Okay, listen. In this electrolysis, we take perforated U-shaped iron container that is used as electrolytic cell that also act as cathode that is negative charge. Next graphite rod dipped in the solution that act as anode that is positive charge. The solution contain Na plus and Cl minus ions. The solution contain Na plus and Cl minus ions. Okay listen. NaCl dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus Na plus plus Cl minus Cl minus Next this solution also contain H2O H2O also dissociates slightly into H plus and OH minus H plus OH minus collision NaCl dissociate into Na plus Cl minus H2O dissociate into H plus sign OH minus When electricity is passed, Na plus H plus move towards the cathode. Next, Cl minus OH minus move towards the anode. At anode, which ions are present? Cl minus and OH minus. Only Cl minus ions are preferentially discharged due to its smaller discharge potential. Only Cl minus ions are preferentially discharged due to its smaller discharge potential. Next similarly, at cathode which ions present? Na plus and H plus ions. Only H plus ions are preferentially discharged due to its smaller discharge potential and two H plus gain electrons and form H2. Here H2 is released, here Cl2 is release. Next, in solution contain Na plus ions and OH minus ions combined to form NaOH that is taken in this beaker. This is about the electrolysis of aqueous NaCl solution. Okay, listen. NaCl solution is taken in this electrolysis. 
that means what is the nacl solution nacl is dissolved in the water that is nacl solution this electrolysis is done in the nelson cell in the nelson cell a perforated u shaped iron container is there that act as cathode that act as cathode that means negative charge next one platinum rod is dipped in the solution that means any solution in a cl solution is taken in the this u shape tube next platinum rod is dipped in the solution that act as anode that is positive charge okay when electricity is passed through the solution nacl dissociate into na plus and cl minus and also h2 also dissociates slightly into h plus and oh minus so two types of positive ions are there na plus h plus these are moved towards the cathode that is u shaped tube in this in this ions h plus ion only discharge preferentially due to its smaller discharge potential that gain electrons and form h2 this h2 is coming out this tube and similarly cl minus and oh minus ions present at the anode only cl minus ions are preferentially discharged due to its smaller discharge potential so the cl minus ions lost their electrons and form cl2 this uh, cl2 coming out so this tube next solution contain na plus and oh minus ions this combine together and form naoh that naoh is taken in this beaker this is about the electrolysis of aqueous nacl solution okay electrolysis of fused nacl solution at anode <coughs> cl2 is form next at cathode Na is form. In this electrolysis, electrolysis of aqueous NaCl solution, same Cl2 is formed at anode, but H2 is formed at the cathode. This is the difference between the electrolysis of fused NaCl solution and aqueous NaCl solution. Okay, we take anode and cathode. At anode, electrolysis of fused NaCl solution. at anode cl2 is formed at cathode na is formed electrolysis of aqueous nacl solution at anode same cl2 is formed but at cathode h2 is formed h2 is formed okay this is the video lesson what we have discussed in this video lesson okay first we have discussed in this video lesson types of electrolytes those are two types one is strong electrolyte another one is weak electrolyte okay the electrolytes which ionize almost completely even at moderate concentrations are called strong electrolytes strong electrolytes are strong acids strong bases salts also in second weak electrolytes the electrolytes which ionize partially at moderate concentrations weak electrolytes are weak acids weak bases salts next another one is there non electrolytes that is substance which do not permit flow of electric current in the molten state or on aqueous solution called non electrolyte example sugar urea glucose alcohol benzene etc next we have also discussed arrhenius theory of electrolytic solution we have discussed different points next we discuss electrolysis what is the electrolysis the process of decomposition of an electrolyte by the passage of electricity is called electrolysis in the electrolysis electrical energy is converted into chemical energy that means chemical reactions takes place due to the passage of electricity next we discuss two examples one is electrolysis of molten nacl another one is electrolysis of aqueous nacl solution okay thank you for the listening of this video lesson all of you